Yeah. You're on. Okay, the Planning Commission meeting for February 22nd, 2016 is called to order. And the first item on our agenda is a presentation. Metro Associate Regional Planner Jeffrey Raker. Hi. Uh, Good evening. Yeah, thanks for welcoming me in and uh, having me down here. I'm new to the region, so you'll have to excuse me if I'm duplicative in my presentation to you guys and in any, uh, you know, you might know more than I do on many of these issues, but I'm learning my way. It's pronounced Willamette. <laughs> well, then, uh, we had many uh, pronunciations up in Seattle where I'm from that uh, are similar, so I hope I do all Snow right. Snoqualmish? <laughs> yep, Snoqualmish, Squim. Stilaguamish, Squim, there you go. Sequel. Yes. That's right. Um, so I'm uh, from Metro, uh, the regional government, and uh, the regional government has seven, it's a seven member council from six districts and then one that's region-wide for the council president and it's the only elected government in the uh, entire United States that's at the regional scale. Uh, I was back in Seattle and it had a similar model but it was not regionally elected, it was made up of locals. Um, and Metro is primarily known for its management of growth and transportation planning and investment. Um, and it serves as the metropolitan planning organization for our region. And essentially that, the primary role of that is to distribute federal transportation dollars uh, and uh, support the planning efforts uh, in the region. And part of my role is to work more closely with um, the jurisdictions. We have been attempting to be a little bit more um, forthright in working closely with the local jurisdictions. and. I am here to sort of uh, introduce myself and hopefully offer as much assistance as I can to do so. Um, and the federal transportation funds are allocated to 25 cities amongst the three counties. We also manage the urban growth boundaries, so you've obviously been fairly familiar with these things. Um, Metro also does solid uh, management of our solid waste and recycling. Um, there it runs the zoo, the convention center, the expo center, the performing arts center. We operate the transfer stations where you can drop off all your hazardous waste. Um, so it's quite an interesting uh, regional government model. I, I actually find it fascinating that it has these ownership and sort of facilities management roles that in many areas it does not. And I think it provides a unique perspective that sort of aligns with the planning and makes it a little bit more uh, on the ground in, in perspective, which hopefully translates. But uh, I hope to help that in any case. Um, and then you're probably familiar with the 2040 growth concept, and it was adopted 20 years ago. There's a total of 37 areas, centers, that um, are, are sort of concentrations of growth to focus the growth into, and uh, seven regional centers, 30 town centers, uh, downtown Portland being the, obviously, the primary and center city, central city, um, and then 300 miles <coughs> of prioritized uh, criteria, uh, corridors for development, uh, as well as the urban and rural reserves that most of you are probably deeply familiar with. Um, the focus is to provide a mix of housing and employment uh, served by the multimodal transportation system in collaboration with TriMet um, and the other uh, one transit agency that I'm forgetting because I'm new to the area. <laughs> Uh, and then to, to provide focal points into these centers and corridors to provide civic activities and public services and increase the efficiency of, of our inf infrastructural investments. We also work on protecting industry in terms of uh, supporting freight mobility efforts uh, and designating certain industrial lands for protection. Um, and uh, I am actually, I've been hired to support the economic development, uh, somewhat of a new emphasis for the regional government uh, in which we are exploring how we can be a little bit more effective in aligning our transportation and land use development and investment uh, with uh, economic development outcomes that have been stated by local and regional organizations. Uh, uh, in tandem with that, we work on a, a number of things to support uh, sort of more green infrastructure and park systems and the open space in our area. 
um, and creating a network of parks, trails, open space through the help of the Parks and Open Space Acquisition Program. We have a number of grants, such as the Nature in Neighborhoods Restoration and Community Stewardship Grants that are um, uh, somewhat small, but definitely effective in supporting uh, a local jurisdiction in some of the um, efforts that are catalysts for uh, future growth. Um, so it's been two decades of three regional votes. Back in 1995, there was a $136 million bond. In 2006, a largely successful one, as well as the one in 2013. The primary function that I serve, uh, in addition to connecting you to the resources and being a liaison, liaison generally to the Metro, is to support the development review uh, and land use uh, review function uh, to look at how the city complies with a framework and functional plan. So the framework plan is more the policies and functional plan being more the tighter uh, sort of regulations. Um, when we review the local jurisdictions, um, sort of the changes to zoning, uh, there's no review required for things like home occupation permits or signage or design review or cell towers or temporary use, um, as well as you know, the marijuana laws and partitions. But we do look at um, no net loss of zoned residential capacity. Uh, in industrial areas, we look at whether the restrictions on those uses in those areas are being met. Um, as well as um, uh, looking at whether the standard buffer widths and restricted uses are in place and continue to be, uh, as well as a little bit of, um, uh, well, just certain uh, requirements and policies related to parking um, that are very large scale. Uh, so finally, I'm the liaison. Uh, the primary function is land use and development review. Um, general liaison to connect you or to support planning and development related efforts in the, the city um, and providing a connection to relevant projects, staff and technical expertise and other resources at Metro. So I just want to introduce myself. Um, at the project level, obviously you guys are probably familiar with Willamette Falls project, which I recently got a tour of and just it's a tremendous project. I would be very much personally uh, excited to be involved in that project and supporting it and in this role I hope to do so. Um, but uh, the project level staff as you might know is uh, Catherine Krieger and she works um, more closely on the small grant that uh, Metro is providing to support that effort. And with that I'll just uh, sort of introduce myself and uh, see if you guys have any questions and questions uh, for me. Great. Thank you. Any questions from the Commission? I, would, I have one, but it wouldn't be fair. <laughs> I was gonna, what is the name of the organization that was there before Metro? You te you're testing me too much. That's not fair. i got to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone back into the archives. Are, are you going around to all the different uh, planning commissions and city commissions to introduce yourself? No, I am, I am here to be introduced just for Oregon City. I am specifically the liaison for Oregon City, in addition to the project level staff that's working on this. So there's different ones for each? Correct. So that's a new program. It's a local partnerships program at Metro, where a staff person is assigned to support the local jurisdiction. So what interaction will we be having? I mean, will you be here often to hear what we're doing? Or? I, I will. I'll have definitely a staff level interaction. Um, and it, I think it, they'll draw me in where it makes sense, um, as well as just uh, offering to back out where it makes sense as well. Um, and uh, you know, I, I'm willing to serve whatever role um, makes sense for the city. Right. Other um, questions? So I know you're fresh meat. I mean, uh, I know you're new, <laughs> but um, have you had a chance to look at you know the concept plans that are flying around for Oregon City, like Beaver Creek, South End, um, Park Play. I mean, we got all sorts of stuff. Slowly getting introduced to the planning activities in the city. I will not claim to have deep knowledge of them, no. Um, but I intend to. So <laughs> when we have issues such as we want to swap 50 acres of industrial land for 50 acres of residential or move it from this concept area to this concept area, is that your role to review to see if the balance is maintained? Correct. Or uh, to essentially okay. support those types of definitions. Obviously I'll have to call upon colleagues to sure. <laughs> inform yeah, that yeah, effort. But, but, but yes. you're kind of the point person That's for the, the inquiry, I guess, nothing yeah. else. Okay. Good. Great. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, we've also had outreach uh, with Metro staff, uh, Tim O'Brien mm -hmm. and formerly Ray Valone, who has spoken before this body and the city commission too. Um, so look forward to carrying on a good tradition. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very nice much. Nice to meet you all. Next on the agenda is a presentation by Luke Norman for CCC Transportation System Co uh, Coordinator. Moment, Luke, and I'll get this up. PowerPoint night. Yeah. <laughs> The clicker now that should control mirroring, mirroring. I got the mirror, mirror. Oh, you're still on agenda. Operative board being should. This is the design for the road, so there oh, it's good. <laughs> great. Thanks. Uh, so, this is Luke Norman um, with Clackamas Community College, and he's here to tell us all about what his role is and what he does for the college. and. Take it away, Luke. Thanks. Mm. Thanks, Pete. Um, so I've worked. Um, Pete invited me to uh, come out and speak tonight. Um, so um, as I mentioned, my name is Luke Norman. I am the Transportation System Coordinator at Clackamas Community College. Um, my main goal is to reduce um, transportation barriers for students. Um, one in five students at our colleges has either um, dropped a class or been unable to complete a class due to a transportation barrier. Um, and a key part of that work is um, increasing uh, connections to our campus, and that's why I'm here today to share about the Clackamas Community College Transit Center. Um, so just as a quick background, uh, about 10% of our students use transit to um, access our campuses. Um, at our Oregon City campus, we're currently served by TriMet, South Clackamas Transportation District from Malala, as well as our CCC Express Shuttle that provides express service um, from our Oregon City campus to our Harmony campus at 82nd and Sunnyside and to <coughs> the Green Line at the Clackamas Town Center. Um, our current bus stop at Oregon City is also served by um, school buses from the both the Oregon City School District and North Clackamas School District um, as well as paratransit from TriMet and Canby Area Transit. Um, our current facilities are um, both um, inadequate for um, the current service that we're receiving um, and they um, don't allow us to receive additional transit service um, that TriMet and other providers are planning for the future. Um, so um, if you can see the visual, this is a, just a quick snapshot of what our um, sort of transit center, our transit stop looks like today. Um, right now it has about a maximum of six vehicles in there. Um, this is the um, layover spot for TriMets um, 32, 33, and 99 services. It's the both end and start of the line for them. So we sometimes are getting queuing um, <coughs> as buses are unable to get in. Um, it's also a um, tight space. So buses are forced to um, sometimes start and stop, move multiple times, maneuver around, which increases the chances for um, accidents and passengers are also moving into the busway to reach buses that are parked in different areas. Um, so it's been great to um, have this transit stop at our campus, but it's time to um, sort of look towards the future and look for ways of creating a space that's um, both safer and allows for additional capacity. Where is it? Oh, where is that? I was just going to ask you where the bigger map was and where is that in relation to the most of the classrooms? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so right off to you can see just sort of the corner there on the side on the right hand mm -hmm. side is the um, that's our um, our key um, I'm thinking on the name our um, key student center and it's um, near our um, Roger Rook and Jardin um, classroom spaces um, but as you can see on the next piece here um, as part of the um, Community College's larger plan to um, update our campus will be um, creating a larger mm -hmm. gateway there that will connect the transit center um, to the classes and to the campus. 
Um, the piece that um, I'm here today to speak about is um, sort of covered in that um, dotted area. It's the new transit center and then the shared use path that connects to the Oregon City High School. Um, when completed, the new transit center will allow for 12 sawtooth bus bays, so six on each side, which will um, over double our current capacity. Um, it will have um, those two transit-only access roads to serve the transit center, which will um, remove the potential of um, conflicts with um, personal auto, auto vehicles. <coughs> um, it will have this new shared use path to provide um, connection for people walking and biking to the um, Oregon City High School's property line and work, working closely with Oregon City High School because they're working to pave their own portion of the path. Um, it'll also provide um, short and long-term bike parking right at the transit center um, so people can either lock up their bike for a couple hours if they're coming to class or they can lock it up in a secure um, place for the day. Um, so a couple of the key benefits of it are outlined here. Um, the, one of the biggest ones is that, as you may be aware, and TriMet will share it later, um, they're starting to plan out what's their growth for the next 10 to 20 years through their um, service enhancement plans. And this transit center allows us to be positioned to receive that growth, to receive additional transit service. Um, additionally, um, increased transit really helps our students access career technical education, which is a key part of our workforce development strategy. Um, and um, with the new industrial sites being um, positioned along Beaver Creek Road is some great synergy there. Um, along with the shared use path and the new um, bike facilities, this will help um, enhance the last mile connection from our transit center um, to the Beaver Creek Road sites, as well as to the um, Oregon City High School. Um, and finally, this is a key connection for rural residents. Um, residents coming from Wallala, this is their only transfer point to reach um, TriMet services. So if they need to get to Portland for work or they need to get to other social services in Clackamas County, um, enhanced capacity here and a safer transfer point um, is a benefit for them. Before you leave that, are you saying that, that it's going to be like a park and ride there, that somebody from Malala or further out can park their cars there, take up the students' parking spots, and use this as a transit center? Um, no, I think... He's, I think it's referring to the fact Malala, the, the <coughs> earlier slide talks about Malala there's bus. a Malala bus line that comes Right, but he's that. saying it's going to improve rural residents be able to park there and get to the bus lines, right? Um, for this point, specifically with the um, service, the bus service from Malala, so as um, we grow, we're able um, to enhance, um, have more TriMet buses come, so it provides better connections for them, and so I know that... Clackamas Community College. And for to transfer. So right now, Malala residents, if they're coming up to um, Portland, they're okay. transferring. Okay. So just wanted to understand. Thanks. Yeah. Of course. Um, so just a couple of next steps here. Uh, the transit center that we've outlined for you is contingent on um, receiving a um, uh, successfully going through the Connect Oregon grant process, which is run by the Oregon Department of Transportation. Um, we will have our proposals reviewed by the Region 1 Area Commission on Transportation members on April 4th. Um, and if we're successful, um, construction will um, begin in 2017 along with the other work for the campus. Um, if our grant um, is not successful, we're going to have to step back to the drawing board a little bit and figure out um, what we'll be able to develop with the existing bond funds we have available. Great, so I want to thank you for um, taking the time to listen and just want to let you know if you have any additional questions. Any other questions? I still have a question about that. Uh, <coughs> so people from Malala or Colton and all that have the capability of taking a bus from those locations coming in and connecting to a bus to downtown Portland. Is that <coughs> kind of what you're saying? They do, and also they can take buses if they need to reach um, county services at the Red Soil Campus and also um, medical facilities along um, TriMet bus routes in Oregon City. So that's going to increase those kind of also buses that come in there to take them to Red Soils or to other locations. So that's also something new in that? It'll allow for um, 
the connection is there. What it'll allow is to expand it. Um, it will allow for greater, um, more buses from Lala to come up. I know they're um, talking about expanding. It will also allow us to receive additional buses from TriMet. And as they look at their potential connector shuttle, we'll have space at our transit center for um, residents to transfer to those services. And I think in the first slide you said that 10% of the students take a transit. So there's enough parking for the other 90%. I noticed I've been there before, lots of parking, but does that need to expand for the future too for Clackamas Community College? Um, not currently. Right now, the near and parking lots do get very full, but in our um, larger parking lot by our Barlow building, there is still um, capacity for parking. Okay. Sorry. And it tends to surge. You know, like 9 o'clock, everybody has a class. By 11, <laughs> three people have a class. And then mm -hmm. 1 o'clock, 900 people. So, um, does CAT do transfer there too? Can be area? CAT does if um, for their um, paratransit service. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so they'll connect there to TriMet service. Um, the other thing, can you go back to the big picture the picture? Map. Yeah. In there. The site um, oop, nope, oh, sorry. I got a little excited. Um, it looks like your transit area will come in, do its little transit thing, and then hit a, a section of Douglas Loop. My assumption is that they would loop back out to whichever direction, whether they're going to Beaver Creek or wherever. Um, is, are there plans to improve Douglas Loop? Because it's, uh, the, I drive a big pickup, and when I meet another big pickup coming the other way, we do the uh, and, uh, um, you know, I can just see if buses are rolling through there that, um, you know, you might want to look at making sure you've got good striping and, you know, your shoulders are well developed because, um, it's hard. It, you know, the, well, it depends kind of on the other driver because, for one thing, drivers speed along the the loop there, and so they come in, they start cutting, you know, the corner and all that sort of stuff, and that could, I mean, have knowing that there might be buses there might slow people down, but it also might create a conflict point where the bus is trying to pull out and the person's doing forty five mm -hmm. instead of twenty five, and so. Uh, I just would be concerned about that, but I do like the idea that there, it's that we have kind of a, a south end transfer point for for services, especially because you're so close to those social services that they may need. That uh, it, it, it's a good uh, good partnership. May I touch on that also? You, uh, you, you got to come up here. You need to come up. Just you need to come up. Otherwise, it won't pick you up, okay. and we don't want <clears throat> Renee upset at us. Yeah. He's the man behind the curtain. Just remember, uh, Myers Road is the road that kind of yeah. comes down below right. and then sweeps up. That access point that you're talking about will be our third entrance on campus. Mm -hmm. So the vision is the buses come in off 213, cross Douglas Loop, and end out through Myers Road and can, not be using Douglas Loop as an exit point. Can you introduce yourself now? Uh, Bob Cochran, Dean of Campus Services. Thank you. Blackness Community College. Oh, okay. So looking at this picture, mm -hmm. The top is where they're going to come in, and then yeah. they're going to exit out the bottom. Okay. That's that's our that's our plan right now. Okay. Again, we're just yeah. doing. So that's fine. Ideas, I just but, we're just uh, missing part of the main. Uh, yeah. Just the way I saw it, I saw yeah. the bottom being where two thirteen is and that going sense. north. Yeah. But, okay. Oh, but, that makes a lot of sense. But that being said, does that add more traffic uh, congestion with more buses and more transfers uh, on two thirteen or? Of course it does. Um, well, I guess it would if they're looping around, but yeah. they're using two thirteen yeah, anyway. Well, I was just wondering if a lot more buses, a lot more transfer. I don't know what, do you know what TriMet's goals are for um, total buses? Because I know that they're talking about queuing problems now. I suspect we'll hear soon because TriMet oh. follows you, so. <laughs> right. okay. But if, if you believe the bumper sticker, every bus takes 70 cars off the road. 256. <laughs> Not mine. So, yeah. so on this, this map, where is the existing transit center? Yeah. Right in the middle of pretty much what the SSCC, that's our new student services community commons building. So that turnaround kind of is, is there, is right in that. Okay. that Where the word that, campus is? That loop. Um, mm, no, right about where it says yeah. SSCC. I, that's I not a building. A yeah, yeah it will be a building. It's not okay. a building it's now. A laser, but there I can't care for it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to turn around to see, but it kind of comes in and does a loop right about here. Oh, okay. okay. And then you show bicycle parking. So I am I am assuming and hoping that you're including not just racks, but you've got lockers because people nobody wants to, to ride home yeah. on a wet bike. It's not fun. And so that people can have their 
bike secured because I know my bike is, you know, it's not a cheap bike and I wouldn't want to leave it out hanging out all day long. Exactly. Yeah, so that's what we're working with to have um, some of those um, racks just for quick pipe parking, sure. but also to be able to set aside some additional funds to have um, lockers or another space where you could lock it up and have it both secure and dry. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get the grant, what happens? What's plan B? <laughs> Our plan B is very similar to this. This the, the plan that um, Luke talked about with the, the sawtooth entrances for the bus. That's that's probably not in the plan, but this this movement of, of vehicles from 213 mm -hmm. off and into Myers Road is our plan. The enhancement <laughs> that, that, that we uh, are pursuing with the grant does of the the exciting transit-based ideas. Otherwise, it'll probably just be a pullover, offload, move on. Well, I mean, I, I hope you do get it. Oh, I, we do I know that we're one of the communities in the state that we have some, you know, fairly major transit deficiencies, and that goes a long way to helping people out. I may have missed it, but on, I see the yellow must be for the SSCC. That's a new building? That's or? a new building. And Desjardin, the other yellow, say yellow is an expansion. Um, and then there's another building about where the word center is. And, and we are, um, you want me to move into, I'll just talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we are doing some programming for our first building at the Oregon City campus, so we're not ready to apply and come into that. We are working under the existing master plan for that first building because the threshold is 50,000 square feet for our campus, and that's it's turning into about 42, 43,000. But at the same time as we're going to be moving that that project through the city, we also are going to be moving our plast our master plan amendment through because we we have some updates we need to present to you and get approved. So. The Industrial Technical Center and the Master Plan Amendment should be kind of coming together and moving, moving through the city simultaneously. Okay, great. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, you very much. So our next presentation is with Vanessa Vissar um, of TriMet, and she's going to talk about the planning that TriMet's been doing. Welcome. So be sure and tell Alan that we were expecting him to be here. At least oh, yeah. some of us were expecting <laughs> Alan to be here. I'll let him know you were disappointed. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, before you said, I will pass it. <laughs> Do you I'm work with him often? Surprised, so I'll just go with that. I've known Alan for a long time. Oh, really? We've worked together. Well, he's my director, and he's pretty great yes. to work for. He's terrific. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. So I'm passing around our current um, TriMet's draft. Oop, did I do that? No. Nope. Uh, one moment. Okay. It'll it'll pop back up. <laughs> we get the genie in the bottle again. Um, so it's TriMet's uh, draft vision for future bus service in Oregon City and elsewhere in Clackamas County. But before I get to that, I just wanted to. Um, first of all, introduce myself again. My name is Vanessa Vassar, and I'm with TriMet's Planning and Policy Department. And I'm here to give you an update on what we've been working on um, as we look at improving bus service throughout the region and also how that um, supports the Beaver Creek con concept plan. Um, so, oh, do I? Yep, you got okay. the power. <laughs> so this is uh, a map of TriMet's service district and uh, in addition to uh, serving parts of Clackamas County, we also serve Multnomah County and Washington County. And we did five plans, uh, these long range plans to cover our, our entire region. And Oregon City falls within the Southeast Service Enhancement Plan area, which you can see in the yellow. And you can also see that um, it includes, it doesn't include all of uh, Clackamas County, just portions. And I'll show another map to highlight that more. Um, but this Southeast Service Enhancement Plan um, includes Oregon City, Estacada, Happy Valley, Milwaukee, and Portland. Um, and essentially they're 20 year visions and we um, have been identifying um, bus service needs throughout the region and making proposals to meet those needs and asking for input. And um, this is kind of an outline of the process we've been following. Uh, we started out by collecting data, looking at uh, census data to see commute patterns and then also just talking to residents and riders, surveying them, uh, holding meetings. We held a couple here with the public, uh, as well as um, some employers and other service pro providers. Um, 
and then we took that information and we developed this first draft vision of bus service in Oregon City and um, elsewhere in Clackamas County and um, it's still open uh, for revisions and uh, we're about to come up with a new uh, the next draft and um, get more input on that and then ultimately come out with a final vision um, towards the end of spring so through our outreach process and by coordinating with uh, city staff here on the various concept plans um, we have um, these are kind of highlights of what we've heard which is better connections between communities like Oregon City and job and education centers um, providing more local service and service to neighborhoods and um, just improving service on existing lines um, so based on that uh, is this map which you have the handout for this these are the proposals uh, based on what we've heard and I'll, hi I'll highlight a few um, in Oregon City but one is um, if you can see the line 152 this is rerouting um, the current 152 today so that it serves Oregon City and provides more connections between Oregon City and the Milwaukee industrial area to access more jobs and employment um, and then we're also proposing improvements to the line 32 which um, connects with the orange line um, in, to downtown Portland and that would better serve um, we're proposing increasing frequency and just providing better hours of service on that line um, to meet the residents needs and also students needs it go it serves Clackamas Community College and also I just want to highlight line 79 uh, which uh, we're proposing for more frequent service to provide better connections between Oregon City and the Clackamas industrial area and then finally I want to highlight this kind of orange blob um, that you see in the Oregon, or, yeah, Oregon City area we're calling these community and job connector shuttles and essentially these um, are areas that we've heard and identified um, there's a need for service um, but the timing and scale of development is still to be determined in some of those areas so um, we're not proposing exact routing quite yet uh, we'll do that in coordination with city staff and um, we're also looking at these areas as potential for uh, shuttle service to better meet the needs of the community we can have a more flexible schedule with shuttles and um, it can get in and out of, of neighborhoods easier than a 40-foot bus so those are the kind of the highlights um, and I just wanted to quickly uh, briefly go over how we look at making service improvements each year we're hoping to finalize this vision and um, base our service improvements off of this vision so if you see something on here that should be added please let us know or reconsidered um, but this is uh, so we start out each each year with our budget forecast and that helps us determine how much funding we have available to put put towards service improvements uh, so after the budget forecast we start to look at um, either maintaining optimizing and increasing service based on the budget so we look at uh, are there uh, on-time performance issues with existing lines that need to be addressed are there capacity issues or that where we need to add more buses to a trip and then um, finally we look at increasing service and adding um, service which is what we'll be looking at with these visions and it's around that time next or late summer we'll be coming back to city staff and having uh, more discussions about which service improvements um, should be considered for the next year because we currently don't have funding to do all the service improvements in here or the other planning er the other service plan areas so we really want to work with staff to figure out what's the most important improvement that needs to be made that year but in working with staff and looking at some other considerations we'll come up with an annual service plan proposal and bring that out and get feedback on that and then eventually we'll roll out service uh, in the fall of the following year so that kind of outlines uh, the process we take and uh, lastly just want to highlight the considerations that go into um, the service improvements that we put in the in these long-term visions and that also are considered in the annual service plan process in addition to your input um, but we look at um, if there's currently if there's demand for service at the time um, to 
uh, match putting a service in? Um, is If we add certain service, is it going to provide local connections in addition to regional connections? Um, where is growth occurring currently or where it's projected to occur? Uh, we take a close look at that as well as um, equity and then how productive a line can be based on the ridership projections. And then um, these two final considerations um, impact what we're able to do each year and that's the cost of putting service in and then operation needs such as is there layover space for the buses because um, if we don't have a layover some it's it'll be challenging to add more service at times and then uh, do we have enough buses to um, add more service so we're currently gearing up to start adding more service and we don't have enough buses to add during um, kind of rush hour so we're starting to um, order more so we can be ready for that so that's kind of where we're at with everything if you have any questions or comments I welcome them so so we just adopted our TSP and and we've done the multimodal option you know and we know that we're not going to get any kind of funding for um, any specific roadway improvements of any nature this vis the Beaver Creek 213 intersection and some of the other big ones and I know it's not a direct trade of you know the amount of money that's not going to be used to do these improvements are going to go to buses I mean I know that that's not realistic but but I'm just wondering I'm just hoping that um, uh, that there is this trade-off that you know that, that if we do the multimodal that we actually do get those other modes of transportation that that we've outlined in our TSP and that and that there is actually funding and, mm -hmm. and a realistic plan to provide the alternative transportation that mm -hmm. we all think we're going to get <laughs> yeah. well, I understand that and uh, I'm not sure if you're aware but um, TriMet uh, as of January 1st increase its payroll tax mm -hmm. Uh, and so over the next 10 years we'll get about 4.5 million each year to put towards new service so we actually have some funding now um, whereas before we were constrained so I guess it depends on the timeline um, for development right and, and I know that development is supposed to pay for itself but there's just this big long lag period between when development occurs mm -hmm. and when the money comes in to, to fund all of the people that are already here needing the transportation and it yep. just I know it's not your problem, but it's it's all of our problems mm -hmm. really, and it's and it's something that really drives me crazy about the way the system's set up right I now. I understand. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for letting. Me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> other questions from the commission? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, well, I just was going to get to the whole comment about local shuttles. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, I mean, it just seems to me that to a certain extent, that's a you know that's kind of the way to go when you're looking at purchasing new you know buses we don't need the big huge articulated bus but we need a you know a 20 person shuttle to go down to the end of South End Road and come back up to Central Point and get all those people mm -hmm. that are stuck you know four miles away from any sort of bus service um, you know into a transit center or in, at least into the city um, to make use of it and it seems that you know, in general, that that would be a better way to go to a certain extent for TriMet. Um, I'm, you know, I know a few drivers, and I know a couple. One that lives here in Oregon City would love to have an Oregon City route. You know, you get, they they park it at Public Works or wherever, and mm -hmm. and then he goes and gets it in the morning, and he spends eight hours running up and down the you know the the four major artillery. Or, arteries of the city mm -hmm. and uh, you know gets people to places whether it's the Clackamas Community Transit Center or whether it's the downtown transit center whatever that may be mm -hmm. um, so I think y you might want to when you do your little survey of users um, is kind of ask that question I mean um, we hear regularly <laughs> Especially when we're having the uh, concept plan things, you know, I don't you know. You can have all the multimodal written down you want, but if a bus doesn't drive down the street, it doesn't do any good. Mm -hmm. And um, it it uh, especially you know, like I would think it'd be useful in, in downtown Portland. 
oh, not Dano, but you know, the like the, the east regions and stuff where you have the smaller streets, it just where you're picking up five passengers. Like, I see some of the buses that are granted during rush hour, completely different story, but you know, at two o'clock, you've got a full size bus with three people riding it in, and yeah. being able to, you know, transition that. You know, from this time to this time, it's a 40-footer, and then from this time to this time, it's a 20-person passenger van or whatever it might be. Um, I think that's that TriMet would be better looking to that as a future, um, and then continuing to just put more big buses on the main veins, mm -hmm. um, because if people can't get to the main veins, the buses still are they're irrelevant. And I know a lot of people want to leave their cars behind. Granted, now it's a buck seventy-five. There's less of them, but when they have four bucks, there that was everybody last. wanted yeah. to drive mm -hmm. or to walk. So, yeah. um, well, I'll take that back yes, and share. It. I, we haven't been approaching it that way, so I think that's helpful to hear that perspective. Uh, how we've been approaching it, or how we're able to fund these shuttles, is uh, by having a third party operate them, like mm -hmm. Ride Connection. And um, so because of that, we're um, unable to kind of overlap shuttle service with existing service um, due to some of our union. Um, sure, I understand. So, but I think that's a different way of looking at it. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah, wow. I know, just have the, the vein and then the, the little puff at the end of each vein or whatever. Does, so. does I, Ride Connection have a shuttle service in this community? They. I don't know what they operate today, but yeah. um, we're not connected to a shuttle service with them. Yeah, I know Tom, we've looked at Tom had a question. No, I was just going to say before Damon took my thunder, <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. I live on Line 154 up mm -hmm. on Holcomb Boulevard, and right now the Park Place meeting is taking place up in our neighborhood, and you know that Pete. And the biggest complaint we always get, and I notice it, is that. Big huge buses come up that only twice a day mm -hmm. as all I, I've ever seen them and they have two or three riders on them and I live up there I would take a I know the bus connection is down here on Main Street heck I'd, I'd grab it there and came come down into downtown rather than pay for parking looking for a spot uh, but there's only two twice a day one in the morning one in the evening and all the people that's the Oregon View Manor which is a kind of section 8 housing mm -hmm. and they say it's not convenient times for them that's not always the times if you want to get somewhere you have to go down early or early morning and sit for hours until you have to be somewhere so agree totally with what Damon just said it's two or three people in the morning or afternoon and it's just a waste of the bus to go all the way up there and sit yeah. uh, and whereas maybe an hour later you'd have 20 or 30 people yeah exactly right. but that would fill one of those shuttle mm -hmm. vans quite nicely yes yeah. well I, I I'd like feedback. to kind of jump in and, and play <laughs> off of what they've been saying because uh, tonight you're here and we have nobody in the audience from the public mm -hmm. which is tremendously ironic oh, to really? me <laughs> because when we have uh, a plan that people perceive to affect the transportation system this place is full of people who want to talk about and I would say that's one of the top cons concerns that people express is transportation issues <clears throat> And in fact, uh, the last uh, uh, two concept plans we've had and the last two or three major projects that we've had in here, the, the, that was the, the number one major complaint is that these intersections are getting overloaded with a lot of automobiles with single uh, occupant vehicles. And one of the things that I, I think TriMet ought to uh, really seriously consider it, it, pretty much what Damon's talking about is using the smaller vehicles, the smaller buses to to feed people into the uh, the mainline bus system because right now the I think the the main problem you you, you hear the people talking from uh, the South End uh, concept plan they they don't want to have to get in their car to drive two or three miles to catch a bus they want to be able to get on a local bus that will take them there right and they don't have that option now because right now they have to walk a couple miles to get to the main bus line so bridging that gap between the people that uh, are living within two or three miles of 
the bus, the main bus line, but they don't have a, a, a convenient way of getting there. And once they get in their car, there's no good place to park mm -hmm. because all the parking rides are full. Uh, that's that's well, the what they end up doing is just driving to their destination. Exactly. Once back. you get in your car, then yeah. you just drive. Yep. So uh, I, I would challenge TriMet to consider this this intermediate bridging that uh, there's a gigantic need for to fill because right now when we talk about multi multimodal uh, transportation transportation systems, most of us don't take that seriously because we're not seeing that level of interest in providing convenience and service. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think if think? some of those people from the last two concept plans would have known TriMet was here tonight, they, they would have come in and said yeah. something yeah. to they would I didn't know until I saw the agenda for tonight. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> so uh, you hear a lot about the South End concept well, plan area? All over Oregon so City. And, yeah. and Beaver Creek. Beaver yeah. Creek area. Yeah. Okay. And, so kind of where you're looking where the yellow is today. the area that you have highlighted in orange mm -hmm. would be the perfect area for that shuttle service okay. that you're talking about to feed into the main well, lines. Good. And, and I guess to a certain extent it almost stops right when where people kind of want it to be. But that, granted that's our, I'm sure it's following like our urban growth boundary. Or, or it might be our but, district. I'll have to look closely, but, uh, um, more closely. Yeah. Well, Especially because there used to be a bus that would like come from Canby and drive up South End Road mm -hmm. and pick up people and then you know down to the transit center and then when you drop the Canby line because whatever reason Canby did their own thing or whatever they lost that and and the you know um, South End Central Point Leland Myers um, are the south end of the city's main arteries and there's nothing there you know currently nothing planned and yet a you know 20 person bus yep. making figure eights through those areas would probably stay busy yep. right um, no, you know not 20 people in the bus but they would probably have five or six people on a regular basis well people Granted. will walk half a dozen blocks to get to sure. a bus stop but they, they won't walk two or three miles exactly. yeah and, and that's the problem yeah and and those are all dense subdivision areas so there are people there. There are kids there. There, you know, there is a transportation need, and with our developments that we have planned, there will be more. Now I understand that's you know, ooh, we're going to move, you know, seventy people more, seventy more people a day with a one hundred and fifty thousand dollar bus and a twenty dollar an hour bus driver. Mm -hmm. Is it balanced? I don't know, but, but I think it am. might be worth doing for a while. If nothing else is a test platform to see you know what that draws out because right now nobody's trying so nobody's doing anything mm -hmm. but if a bus started making loops you know might come out of the woodwork yeah. well I appreciate your comments it's nice to know that there is indeed a need yeah right here and, and I will say yeah. in general where TriMet serves they do a good job I had never heard a single complaint about where you are doing your job and doing a good job and, and everything so well, it's where you're not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes we know there's a need so. well and, and that's the thing you know I, I've been riding the bus for over 30 years bus train whatever but it's uh, the the one thing that I hear is a constant complaint by my fellow riders is the the lack of convenience yep. mm -hmm. and if if TriMet could figure out a way to, to bridge that gap between the neighborhood and the main trunk lines that would be huge yeah you know, and, and I know I shouldn't say this with the current city manager sitting here going budget but <laughs> maybe one of the partnerships that could happen is if a city wants it enough they purchase the bus and then try met services and drives mm -hmm. it you know as some of some sort of a balance of you know you really need it you've stepped forward we will make it work for yeah. you know five years or whatever mm -hmm. or, you know we appreciate that because we're d there is a pilot out there to see um, how to move forward with these shuttles, so I think that could be a potential option is more partnerships, mm -hmm. at least in the part to figure out what the right routing would be, yeah. if anything. So. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I just was curious if you know what the uh, positive benefits of having the orange line open and its ridership has been. 
That's a good question. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I know the ridership has gone up, but I could back. come back and or relay that information yeah. to staff. But um, it's people have been excited about it, especially getting over the telecom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have well, you had a chance to walk over it? I mean, I know that as as Charles has said that the uh, park and ride is 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 full. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's been a. Yeah, they what? under they full underbuilt the parking garage. Yeah. Well, that I'm has been something we've heard quite a bit. Yeah, they take over the Elks parking lot. They, they need to. They make well, it. Maybe there's a way to yeah, lease they, some of. They it, need to know. lease some of that Elks parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. where the park and ride used to be. Right. I can come questions? back with more information on that. Yeah. Oh, appreciate it, though. Thank, Thank you okay. so for the you're opportunity. You're welcome to come back when we have an audience full of people. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that. No, there's not. I don't think they knew about it because well, I really the didn't. agenda was posted. Mm -hmm. But they don't. They yeah. didn't expect this. It's not In like advance. the concept. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good evening. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, the next item on our agenda is 3A uh, item L 15-01 Beaver Creek Road concept plan approval. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Um, so on January 25th, there was a vote by the Planning Commission to approve the concept plan. Um, and that was based on um, a lengthy public hearing process and a, and a large record. Um, and what we wanted to do was bring back a memorandum for you to uh, uh, look over and send to the City Commission, which summarizes your primary concerns in addition to the record itself. Um, and so what we wrote here outlines uh, first and foremost the transportation issues, um, emphasizing the need to uh, emphasize to the commission the uh, haste for, the need for haste in adopting the alternative mobility targets. Um, and the need to improve TriMet bus service to the city and in particular to the concept plan area. Um, so we also addressed Holly Lane. Um, one, of the, one of the ways that we recommended in the transportation system plan to reduce demand on our intersections is through extension and improvements of collectors and roads outside of the system um, and one of the ways that the Beaver Creek Road concept plan does that is calling for the Holly Lane extension through the concept plan area. Sure that, um, that may have the effect of increasing vehicle trips on that portion of Holly Lane and uh, located outside the urban growth boundary in the county and as a result uh, the Planning Commission recommends that the city uh, coordinate closely with the county in the future uh, to uh, adopt transportation plans and road design standards that acknowledge that there are challenges there. Um, uh, those challenges are regional and require joint solutions. Um, I hope that uh, we've addressed that issue with, with some clarity here. Um, the second issue... Wait, before you go, go ahead. to that one... I yeah. I know we sort of said that, but I think what we also said is that we wanted we wanted to uh, also consider uh, not dumping traffic onto Holly Lane because mm -hmm. that was that had it so many challenges. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it does have challenges, and that we know that in the near term and the far term and the long, long far term, it is not going to get improved. And I don't think that that our jurisdiction should be contributing to increased vehicle trips under its current configuration and situation, which I guess in my opinion cannot really be solved. I mean, I hate to be negative about it, but Holly Lane's got nowhere to go. I mean, you can't, it's almost impossible to widen it. Yeah. I mean, well, that's accurate. Well, not without taking people's property and frontages, but if, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Wait. I didn't bring my son. That was a hand <laughs> oh. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a constrained yeah. road right of way, and it always has been. I mean, it's it's just. No. It, it takes major engineering to do. I mean, 
and I'm not sure the engineering would be successful. Well, I mean, like a large part of, of the lane is um, like where it comes off of Maple and, and mm -hmm. it starts that first bit is actually higher than the surrounding territory. Yeah, yeah. So by engineering, it means you have to lower it. Culvert. Well, you'll have to like culvert the ditches and then build up the road beside it, um, or you know shave it down. But I don't think that's a solution because you want drainage. Um, you know, and then as you start down the hill, there's going to be times where you're going to need to cut into the bank to to have a widening because it'd be easier to do that than to build up a berm. What about the geotechnical issues well, uh, with that area? <laughs> well, you know, frankly, I've been driving the road for 50 years and I've never seen a, any sign of a slippage there. So, it just you know, so when you cut into the bank to widen, then that means you're going to have to have a good retaining wall, but it's not like we haven't figured out how to build those in the last 5,000 years. I've seen on that one sharp corner there. Yeah, well, <laughs> there, I've, I've, I mean seen my, I've seen my share of people in the, in the ditches. Yeah, so. but that's more, I'm sure. I know, that's poor there. driving. But, that's, yeah. But it, it, what it means is, is that every foot of Holly Lane is more expensive than a, a normal road. Else? So are you well, saying and that that's, 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 that's the essence, really. I mean, we, we, we've talked on and on, and, and like, I can't tell you how many hearings yeah. somebody's been here representing Holly, Holly Lane. Lane. Exactly. And the reality is the Clackamas County budget has like zero dollars in there for yeah, they're trying upgrading to, that They're trying to road. dump it off on us, and we, well, and we better mean, not take it either. Well, the county's got their, I mean, they're trying to get roads just from point A to point B. In yeah, in, in areas, terms of so county priority, that road is, is so low, low on their yeah. priority that it never gets there. Yeah. So when I read this, I I thought I missed something that you guys had talked about that evening that did, that you had actually said this, that to put more of the call for the extension of, of Holly Lane south of Maple Lane. You didn't say that? Is what you're saying tonight? It says the city's transportation system plan. I, I don't agree Does with that. Those. I mean... I, I said that when we were adopting the transportation plan. I said, I see no, <laughs> I just don't see that it's going to happen. And with with the funding that doesn't exist and everything else, Holly Lane is just, it's just like it's ready to blow up. I just. That was my question. Was this not discussed on that last night? Yeah. But where else would the traffic go then? I don't know. It shouldn't go there, I can tell you that. Yeah. But the reality of it is, is whenever you end up with a constrained intersection, the traffic bleeds off somewhere. Mm -hmm. If it's, you know, a problem in front of Eastern School, they take off down Division. If it's yeah, but it, where do they go when they're there in Holly Lane? There's, there's nowhere. There's nowhere to go. They, the Red Lane. Yeah. They drive all the way to Red Lane. Oh yeah, and there's Absolutely. no light there. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean. You know, it's Before they opened be Highway 213, that was how I got down the hill yeah. every day. Going where? Holly. Into Portland. Down Holly Lane? Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you're still alive. And you can make some really good speed going down that hill. <laughs> I've seen them in the ditch, that's, that's what right. I said. I never made it into <laughs> the ditch. <laughs> I didn't make it into the ditch either. I cleared it right into the <laughs> field on the other side. But anyway, we have uh, moved past the zone of discussion and yes. Tony's doing a really good job as city manager sitting there going, oh, oh it's my nice. last planning commission. So, I'm sorry. So, uh, with the exception of uh, uh, an ongoing discussion about Holly Lane that we're not going to solve tonight, uh, I, I thought this memorandum that Pete put together uh, looks really good. Is there any uh, can, can we come to a consensus that this memorandum can represent mm -hmm. us going to the City Council? Yep. Well, I figured we will, when we present it, we will say our piece about Holly Lane. And yeah. You so will be the designated speaker so on we're that gonna topic. So we're going to move forward with it, including <laughs> that statement there? <laughs> well, the statement just acknowledges what's there. Okay. And, and, we, and uh, yeah, I think we can, we can amplify that a little bit. But I, I think, uh, can we agree that this is... Uh, a go for uh, yep. presenting to the city council. Yeah, I just I don't think it really gets to it gets to the surface, but not to the root of what 
the community has presented to us over and over and over and over again. Well, well, and trust me, they will to the city commission. Yes, I know they will. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I, I expect no less. If they're not there, I'll be shocked. Well, That's they right. Will be they, they were there when I was on the city commission talking yes, about right. Holly Lane. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's nice to say that we're going to, that we recommend that the city coordinate closely, but, you know, those are nice words, but do they get us anywhere? I don't know if they get us anywhere. Well, it doesn't change. It doesn't change the reality paradigm. Yeah. That's right. So, so are, are we in agreement that we're, yeah. we're concluded on this matter? On Holly Lane? Well, on, 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 the, on this on memorandum? The, uh, yeah, move approval or whatever we need to do. Need a motion? Um, well, you've already voted on the concept plan, but if you'd like to make a separate motion on the memorandum going forward, I think you should. Um, I think we should. I, I, I think it's a good idea. Can we I agree. have a motion so on that? So I move approval of the memorandum to City Commission dated February 12th, 2016. Second. And you'll change the dates and update that? Before it goes to city commission, yes. I'm assuming. Yeah. All right. Commissioner Guile? Yes. Commissioner McGriff? Aye. Commissioner Maybe? Aye. Commissioner Henkin? Yes. Commissioner SP? Aye. Chair Kidwell? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Pete. And when are we talking yeah. about presenting this being presented to the to be last Wednesday? What, um, what's the date? March second. March second. Mm -hmm. So next Wednesday. Is that next Wednesday? Right. So is it, a, is it a date, Charles? <laughs> We're on. We're on. All right. Interesting. We'll welcome you with a book. Thank you. This will be third on the agenda of public hearings. Oh, my that God. <laughs> after the so do, lane zone change and the hospital. Oh, do you, I, I do you, have, a, these you have an ETA? That, uh, yeah. I think, I think, <laughs> I think I'm going give, to give, give Tony my... Um, uh, phone number and he can text me because I'm not, I'm not going to sit through all that again. Is there a reason that they're bunching those all up? Couldn't they move this one to the next one? or They, have they shouldn't. Bunch so because of the one. length that it's taken, they've decided that like to start them moving again. It's been out there a long time. It's just a little unfortunate all three. Can we warn them the that they time. should not do that since we've already been through it? Because <laughs> there's going to be some little ladies and other people who are going to say, they did this because so, we can't stay up that late. <laughs> I think that I think their only burden is to take the public testimony and I'll have some deliberation, but I think we've done most of the heavy lifting on this. Yeah, so, so this is third on the agenda, so it's yeah, safe he, to say it's not going to happen. He's going to text us at the yeah. beginning of the meeting. It will not happen at the beginning of the meeting. You, you want to text us when it's about <laughs> 20 <laughs> minutes away? The bad bad signal. Signal. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be sitting at home with bated breath waiting for your, waiting for your text. You can just be watching it online. And then Do I really? <laughs> I don't think they have live streaming yet. Do they? You know, you can. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. Do dishes? Or oh, really? I thought you had to watch it after the fact. Yeah. Oh, you have live streaming, and then it's like forty-eight hours before you can go. Our glory in HD. It's right in the middle of American Idol. Yeah. I don't watch American Idol. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm working. On Wednesday, <laughs> okay. So, so uh, next item on our agenda is adoption of uh, minutes. We have uh, two. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Appreciate Thank you all. Thanks. They were Thanks, very Jim. useful. Can we, we don't have to talk about the goal five memo. Uh, not unless you don't want to. Um, it's uh, basically the uh, edits to the goal five section of the findings that will be moving forward to the city commission as uh, edited by uh, the commissioners and with input from Denise. Um, I agree with everything that she recommended and uh, the section will be better organized into the subcategories for the goal five resources natural resources historic resources and open space good okay yeah. let's move on so okay we, can we uh, move approval for both of them at the same time or do they have to be separate you can do them together if nobody has any objection okay. i move we approve the uh, is that 4A 16 099. No, you just say planning commission minutes. For planning commission meetings for June 22nd and August 10th. Okay, and I'll second um, that. I've got some corrections. Oh, see. Uh, Sorry. Uh, uh, I, uh, I can't uh, pronounce uh, this person's name, but anyway, you had a person's name in there with question marks. Okay. <laughs> and here is this is her name. Thank you. Okay. With exceptions. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's who was at the meeting. Excellent. <laughs> 
right. with a, a, a change in spelling Thank and you. move that we adopt yeah. the. No, it wasn't spelling. It was an. It was an omission. We didn't. Okay. Question she said marks. it so fast yeah. that we didn't. So if you had read the minutes, you would have seen the question I did marks. read the minutes. Yeah. So Adoption anyway. of Planning Commission minutes for June 22nd and August 10th. As amended. Thank you. As, as amended. amended. As corrected. Second. Commissioner Gov? Aye. Commissioner McGriff? Aye. Commissioner Maybe? Aye. Commissioner Hankton? Aye. Commissioner Espin? Aye. Chair Kidwell? Aye. It had been so long I had to read the minutes just to make sure I was there. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Uh, okay. And then uh, last but not least, we have communications. Can I ask a quick question, though, on the minutes? Yes. Um, Tony, how come I, I don't see any for July or other months and they're way back to August? Is there a reason why they get backed up so much? We talked too much. Someone asked me recently, how come there's never minutes out there on, in a timely fashion? I said, I don't know. There will be soon. Okay. Um, we we were much. waiting on our minutes person to complete all of our minutes, okay. and um, we just never really rose to the top in a timely manner. So the city has contacted another person to do the backlog of minutes. So the next few hearings, you'll start to see large batches of minutes, so we're all okay. caught up. And so somebody find. actually comes in and watches the video and, and oh. does the minutes? Yep. That's it's hard right. to find people that do that. It is very They drink a lot of coffee. That's been our problem <laughs> to do it right. Because they're insane. They have to do it right. It's, it's okay, not sorry, I, yeah. I just mm -hmm. needed to ask that. Well, we've had to expand. We've had one person yeah. doing them. It's just... It's a lot. It's, it's sure. tedious. It is. Yeah. Okay. Laura? I have some updates for you. Okay. Okay, so first, um, today was the first day for our part-time planner. Um, they'll be working half-time. His name is John Stutzman. Um, and then we also have a full-time assistant planner named Diliana Vasileva. Um, they both come to us from different experiences. Uh, Diliana has come to us from Siskiyou County. And John Stutzman has worked a variety of jobs, including community development director for City of Roseburg and um, a long career at David Evans and Associates. So we're excited to have them join the team. Um, also, our planning commission schedule. So here's an update of what's to come. We will be canceling the next planning commission hearing, and that'll be March 14th. Then on March 28th, we're going to come back to you with an explanation about how we read our code for food carts. So if you wanted to do a food cart, what our code says. Um, so it's an explanation. And then we'll also talk to you a little bit about creating a type one site plan process. So for small things on commercial buildings, if you want to put in a new door or do a really small addition, is there a way in which we could change your landscaping, things like that, through a type one non-discretionary process. So we'll work through those issues with you then too. Then on April 11th, we are going to invite the TAC, or the Transportation Advisory Committee, to the Planning Commission. And we are going to have a Transportation 101, or we're going to have a work session where our transportation engineer is going to talk about how our code reviews transportation. We'll talk a little bit about how the ITE manual works. And then we'll talk about the Planning Commission's role in reviewing transportation and its impacts, as well as the tax role in also reviewing transportation and its impacts as well. Um, so we'll have a work session, and that should be very exciting. Um, hopefully we get a big audience for that. Uh, if you have any questions or anything in particular you're interested in regarding transportation, please send me an email directly and we'll make sure that during the presentation we hit on those topics. If you want a really good turnout for the meeting, just drop the word Holly Lane <laughs> or Beaver Creek Road in there. Say nothing of Beaver Creek mentioned through April. Wow. Just just note those somewhere in, in the notification. There and you go. you'll have an audience full of people. And speaking of um, oh no. those intersections, we've started our alternate mobility study um, for the city. Uh, we identified three intersections, right? Beaver Creek 213 and the two on ramps. So we're starting to gather our information and figure out how we move forward looking at corridor studies or adoption of alternate mobility standards. So more um, to come on that. Something that I would like to have a discussion on the TAC thing is mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, I don't know. I'll just blunder it out. Um, a discussion about VOC mm -hmm. and what is it? How is it calculated? What does it mean? You know, versus A, B, C, D, E, F. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because frankly, I never thought those ABCs really meant a whole lot because I don't know that there's ever been an A. <laughs> I mean, you know, the A is what you draw on the piece of paper, but by the time you build it, it's maybe a B, probably a C by the time the first car drives on it. <laughs> you know? um, well, but and, and that's all dependent on time of day. Sure. Mm -hmm. It might be an A for a few... From 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. A few hours uh, <laughs> during that 24-hour period, but yeah. it could be an F later on in the day. <laughs> right. When I want to... I think Beaver Creek um, 213 is a great example of that. Yeah. We can and, drop and out so there right now. Um, so, you know, just, just something to just, exp you know, this right, is what VOC so. is and this is what it means and, um, you know, this, this is kind of the impact of us changing to that. Mm -hmm. What, you know, I mean, because to a certain extent it gives us a better measure mm -hmm. of how bad a, an intersection has become or how good it's become with the improvements. Ooh, it went from an F to a C. Well, what does that mean? It went from 110 to 86 percent. That, hell, you know, that's, that mm -hmm. has some value. Actually, if I could, Great. I'm not sure if it's the right time to do that with TAC, but it would be interesting to know the interaction between the city of Oregon City and um, the state, especially as it refers to coming off the West Lynn Bridge, uh, West Lynn Oregon City Bridge, as they come into downtown. I mean, they have left, I guess I talked to somebody from TAC, and they said the sign got moved down from by the, by the Oregon Department of Transportation instead of up above. So everybody's turning left there and people are Almost honking their horns. The yeah, they're they're halfway and the, turn in the sign. What is the relationship well. between us and them that this is part of our city, yet they say that they have no control over that intersection, yet those of us who have businesses down there listen to the honking and the irate drivers. And that, it's just a, a big accident waiting to Do happen. Do you want to know how many times that I have reported that to Public Works? They said, oh, the sign is there. By the time, it's down to the left now. Yeah, it's a, it's that's even a stupider <coughs> location than the where it was before. It needs to be up there at the top that says no left turn. Because anybody who's used to that is now honking at everybody coming through there and trying to run them up against them to prove a point. You're not supposed to turn left there, and sooner or later they're going to start meeting in the middle of that <laughs> intersection. But it would be interesting to hear what is our relationship with the department, especially when it's right within our city limits. That's great. And we also have a lot of county roads within our jurisdiction. Right. So we can Creek talk Road. about that as well. But that's downtown right in a real mess. I know. <laughs> it was on the bridge as you drove, but nobody could see that. And now, I mean, it's, I, I've seen it. I know where it is. Nobody is looking down there. Mm -hmm. Well, I, are, I think Tom raises a, a, a really good point is that Oregon City has really uh, three different jurisdictions of roads running right through town. What would they do if we just took the sign down and put it up there? Like, <laughs> well, it would take them about four and a half months to do anything about it because it took them almost a month and a half to take down the sign that we put up my senior year that said, "Welcome to West Lynn, a suburb of Oregon City." When we put <laughs> that bridge, because yeah. nobody could figure out who was supposed to get out there and take, and yeah. take it down. <laughs> Why would we go out and take that down quickly? Well, we didn't, but it's a, <laughs> and so our response is it's a state problem, and then the state took three, almost four, four weeks to get somebody up there to, and it was just hooked. It wasn't bolted. It was just hooked over the road. Just pick it up and drop it in the truck. You're done. But it took them a month. I know. And so by the time if we move a regular sign, they'll never know. I know, and that's what I'm saying. You know, sometimes you just have to be a little more proactive. So, anything else? Uh, the I last thing. Before you get off attack, so here's a, a question that I've been pondering for about a month now. And it seems to me, not that we need any more work, but let me just throw it out there and then you can, you can kill me later. <laughs> or no. It seems to me that that TAC needs to be jointly managed. It isn't strictly an engineering issue. There's a lot of stuff that they're doing involves, involves to me, the skill level and work that we do as planners. And as I was reading their purpose, authority, and duties, I came across, oh, they're supposed to be including neighborhood traffic management plans. Hallelujah. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm reading, I've been reading their bylaws to find out what their purpose and authority is supposed to be. 
And I said, gee, I have never seen heard anybody mention a neighborhood traffic management plan. I know that years ago, Oregon City Planning Department talked about doing neighborhood plans, and that was something that, that's still on the drawing board somewhere in the ether. But a neighborhood traffic management plan? That intrigues me. Sounds ambitious. I think it sounds proactive. And I'm, I'm all about I think that. in a lot of places it's needed. Yes. Uh, we totally need it. <laughs> yeah. And I'll ping you offline. I'd like to have something electric vehicle in that discussion, too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I didn't hear that. What was that? Electric car. Great. And the last thing is that um, you're going to start to see some emails regarding marijuana and us creating code um, for if marijuana becomes legal. So some we're looking at time, place, and manner. Um, Pete's going to be running that project. You'll see a uh, website going up online soon in the next couple we'll weeks. Just ignore it. We'll have a couple of open houses as well. Um, I was at a city commission meeting when they once said that they would not allow it here because it's against the uh, state and, and, and federal charter and that they uh, they have to follow federal law and it wasn't legal. Has that changed? I know that no, some counties are making a lot of money off of it. It's being challenged in court. So the worry is in that Oregon city or just yes, our, our decision on our business license oh. has been challenged in court. If we lose that and actually when the vote to legalize marijuana was statewide, it passed in Oregon City. 52 and a half to 47 and a half against. Um, That's pretty close. So we have the moratorium based on the business license being challenged in court. We have a vote in November that'll just go to the electorate of the city of Oregon City. If both of those go down and we don't put something in place, then we have nothing to fall back to. We did do a tax, didn't we? Yes. So what do you mean if they both go down? Well, if we lose in court and the okay. voters say we'd like we want to legalize marijuana in Oregon okay. City, okay. then we have That's no zoning I, in place, and we'd have saying, to treat yes. it as a retail. Yeah, my biggest concern is what you see in a lot of places where suddenly there's seven green crosses up, like in one area, and it's just you know crazy. You know, like overnight these dispensaries are popping. For one thing, the green cross is safety, not marijuana. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a problem with that to begin with, but. Um, they just, you know, the I don't know what, you know, what, just globally speaking, whether there's a density provision we can put in for the businesses or, you know, whatever. It's, it just. Do you guys have a radius for uh, vulnerable population members like schools and hospitals? Well, there's and the OLCC and regulations, yeah. but then what Oregon City would adopt on top of that um, yeah. as far as. Place I think it's like a thousand feet or something thousand, like that. Yeah, so yeah some people are saying too. Really and then store. we can <laughs> potentially <laughs> adopt not only zoning, whether it's not permitted or conditional, um, or but also site plan and design review criteria for. I suppose those. essentially you could make the make the buffer so large that they would. They, there's <laughs> no way that they could ever even <laughs> be it's located. It's the same buffer we have for billboards. Yeah, but, but see, <laughs> well, the problem with that is. Yeah. The only place they could build would be downtown Oregon City yeah. because the school district is gutted the in yeah. interior school yeah. system. So we, have we could keep them on the outs out from the fringe, schools. but we couldn't right. keep them from the inner city. The burbs, right? Yeah. So we're looking at reaching out to our existing neighborhood groups, our Main Street group, and the Chamber of Commerce and businesses, uh, as well as uh, residents yeah. and I mean, schools. It, it's an inevitability whether it's this year or in ten years or whatever. So we need to we need to start working on some sort of rational, you know. Is there a specific situation. definition for vulnerable population? I will check into that. Okay. Yeah. So and then Laura talked a little bit about the new uh, staff members that we were hired that we were able to hire. So. Uh, the river walk as part of the Willamette Falls Legacy Project is kicking off. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, the design team was in town um, last week. And um, so as part of that, uh, the partners group, which is made up of the two electeds and the CEO from each of the organizations, met a couple weeks ago and approved a draft IGA intergovernmental agreement for governance of the project. So essentially we have multiple jurisdictions putting in staff and money into the Riverwalk design and engineering. And so this governance sets up the decision making framework, authorizes the budget, um, um, 
you know, uh, identifies the resources each agency will be bringing. So as part of some of those agreements, I identified uh, two of our planners, Christina and Kelly, to be primarily dedicated, uh, roughly 90%, 0.9 FTE to the Riverwalk project. And then through the grant that we were able to receive from Metro for the uh, development strategy, part of that included funding uh, for an additional planner to help backfill the resources the local jurisdiction would be expending on that grant. Um, and then some other funding sources that we were able to put together allowed me to allowed us to identify this one and a half FTE in a limited time duration to help backfill the planners that will be dedicated <laughs> to the Riverwalk. So I didn't come across a bunch of money and got to staff up planning. This is a, a temporary measure to help with while we're doing the Riverwalk over the next 18 to 24 months. Speaking of which, have you got somebody in line to fill the vacancy in planning that just opened up? I do not yet. Can I ask on the um, what you just discussed, is there a current brochure, like a trifold or anything? I'd say 60, 65 percent of my people come by my store down there don't know anything about what's going on, and they're from out of town, I mean, out of state or in West they're Lynn, and they don't know. And I would love to have something I could turn hand out to people and let them know what's going on here in Oregon City. Uh, we probably, we have some dated material, so as we're just beginning now, we are, um, you know, new... Uh, information will be produced yeah. here shortly and so I believe up, I know we're gonna have a lot of that the first uh, open house is March 30th from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock just double check that yep. when Wednesday night uh, yes it's we're planning to have in Oregon City we're trying to find a location large enough to accommodate what we expect in terms of a turnout March 30th correct it's a Wednesday night 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock And then um, the other thing that we're working on are the alternative mobility standards for the Highway 213 corridor. So we've been negotiating with Oregon Department of Transportation and trying to identify a scope for that work. So that'll be something that we're working on. How much is the county going to be involved in that? We've had we've had discussions with them. We have. I just wanted to mention I still had on my radar screen, um, as you know, I have a, a grave concern about state agency coordination, and particularly with goal, I believe it's goal 11. I hope I got the right goal. And, and it involves um, the school district. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we need to work with them to do like a 101 on what that coordination means or whether we actually have any sort of an MOU with them. But my concern stems from the fact that I've said this before, that we have uh, disinvestment by the school district in the core of Oregon City. All of the schools are on the outside, and I literally had a conniption fit when I saw in the Beaver Creek Road <laughs> Master Plan comments that they said, yes, we're thinking about buying property out there. So again, we have another possible siting of a school out on the edge where we have to do all the driving and all the school buses and all the traffic and congestion and we're not looking at at coordinating with them so we can reinvest in the schools that we already have and that has a lot to do with planning and coordination and helping them understand what their role is in the big picture we did okay. the same thing a long time ago with South Fork I mean they're one of our providers and they are a special district so all of those guys you know the the South Fork the Tri-Cities I mean they all to some degree have an effect on how our community grows and how we plan it and instead you know we kind of have us and then we have all these people out there in these little orbits but we're not interacting I guess I moved too close to me I think we had one more thing. Oh, okay. sorry. I guess I don't. Um, there were some statistics in your packet for what we've been processing in 2015. Um, as you can tell, the number of applications has gone up slightly um, for new lots in the city. We had about the same number of lots as we did last year. Um, we are keeping busy. You can see on the charts that our we're starting to see a little bit larger in s scale of subdivision, so maybe a few more lots. We're maybe in like the 35 range, whereas a couple of years ago, 
they were smaller subdivisions. Um, we anticipate staying quite busy through 2016. We have an uptick in the number of pre-application conferences, so you may start to see some larger projects come before you as well. Um, are there any questions about our statistics? I really like the chart. It's not on okay. the same okay. night. Are there any scheduled uh, to be on the ballot annexations for Beaver Creek or anywhere for May, or is that past time? Not We've for May. We've got to do our mobility standards. They can, nobody can do anything. Not okay. for May. We do have a pre-op for uh, emergency annexation coming up, uh, relatively small. Okay. Just wonder if there's going to be anything on that ballot. I would doubt it. Okay. Anything else? That's it. I move it again. We, we are adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tony gets to get out of here.